Now on Fixing the Money Thing. Uh, yeah, you need to understand how the kingdom operates. It answers all the questions. For instance, Jesus himself in his hometown, it says in Mark chapter 6, it says, only in his hometown among his relatives and in his own house is a prophet without uh, honor. He could not do any miracles there. Now, this is Jesus. He could not do any miracles there. And it says he was amazed at their lack of faith. Now, notice he was amazed at their lack of faith because there's principles in other words, there's a jurisdiction issue. Do you understand what I'm saying? So you have to understand the legal issue of jurisdiction. Satan is playing for jurisdiction always. Now, he doesn't have any legal jurisdiction, but if you believe his lie and give him jurisdiction, then he can still kill and destroy. Now, in this particular case, Jesus could not heal. Does Jesus have the power to heal? Amen. Yes. Of course he does. But you see, what, a believer, what baby Christians and people have been taught, because no healing took place there, they would say, well, Jesus was there. It must have been God's will. It was not God's will. Jesus was there to heal, but he could not. And so you have to understand. People say, well, well I was praying for Uncle John, you know, and I believed God for him, but he died. But you don't have spiritual jurisdiction over John, your uncle, or your grandpa. Jesus preached the word of God that they could believe it and be healed. And so you have to know how the kingdom operates. And this is one of my passions, is to help people be uh, this, these perverse ideas, these doctrines, to teach them how the kingdom operates so that the enemy cannot lie right. their freedom away from them with all this perverse understanding. In fact, Amen. Paul called these things doctrines of demons. Amen. Satan has lost his authority, but he's tried to set these walls up in people's lives that are still hindering them from stepping in to the yes. authority God paid for. Amen. And the enemy wants to pervert God's character so that yes. we don't have confidence. We don't have faith as Abraham had to believe, even though the circumstances didn't look right. He had to believe yeah. that what God said is true. Well, how much confidence can no, you have when you're on the battlefield good. if you think the commander that you're following could also turn and fire on you? Yeah, that's good. Right? Man. That's good. And we don't, in the natural, we see that, but that's what religion has taught us That's about right. God. I would venture to say that most of us here deal with guilt and inferiority because of what we've been taught. Now, if you feed on the media, friend, you're going to feel bad about yourself because you're not going to look like everyone. You're not going to be talented like everyone. And so what the media is, is a propaganda machine to steal your very identity. Everyone wears the same thing. What's in style? And it's nothing wrong with styles. What I'm saying is, who are you? Who are you? And you have to realize you're different for a reason. God has made you unique for his pleasure. And your uniqueness is your strength. Now, guilt, it's amazing Christians have guilt. You know, I didn't read my Bible today. So, did the pastor really say that? So you didn't read it. Well, read it tomorrow, right? Your position in Christ is a legal standing. But the enemy's fighting for your thoughts. He's fighting for your words of agreement. He's going to try to move you outside of the jurisdiction of the truth that God has given you to stand in into a lie that enables him to lure you into bondage. And this is what he wants to do. Listen, you can't go and watch everything out there. It still amazes me what Christians watch. It's like, you've got to be kidding me. You're feeding on that stuff? It's like, you're going to end up acting that out. You're programming yourself. And so it is, a, it is a media blitz to rob you of your destiny. The legal walls are down. Satan has no authority. But he has erected a lot of walls in people's lives that is hindering them from believing in themselves. You become your worst enemy. Amen. And so we need to tear those walls down. Yes, Pastor. Titus 2.11 says, for the grace of God has appeared that offers salvation to all people. God is not choosing to bless one, another, That's right. not save one, save Have another. It, it says he's offered salvation to all through grace, right. the power of the Holy Spirit, the goodness, the grace, the righteousness of God. It's been offered to all people. It teaches us, grace teaches us, to say no to ungodliness and worldly passions and to live self-controlled, mm. upright, and godly lives in this present age. Yes. That same grace, that same righteousness gives you the power yeah. to say, 
say no to sin, right. not to be out there doing the things that the world is doing and saying, hey, you know, God loves us all. We can do anything we want. But instead to say, hey, there's a better way. The power of God will make you righteous, but it'll also deliver you yes. and give you the grace to stand strong in the face of adversity, in the face of sin. We don't want to partake of sin and walk in sin. Hey, but when we do make a mistake, we can run right to the throne room and find help in time of need. Amen? We can run right yes. into his loving arms and we can get everything right so we give no place to the enemy. Not like even that. a minute. When you slip, when you fall, when you make a mistake, run right to his arms and get that clear. Why do we confess it? Not because God is deciding whether to uh, make us righteous or not, but because he's already made us righteous. Yeah. He's already chosen. We confess it to throw it off of ourselves so the enemy can't condemn us with it, right? Yeah. We can boldly point to Jesus and say, I've already dealt with that. Thank you, Satan. You're not reminding me of my past. I'm reminding you of your future and you are condemned to the lake of fire. I am walking in righteousness and authority. I'm going to step out. I'm going to go take the city. And not only am I righteous, yep. I'm going to go set a lot of other people free and they're going to recognize who they are in Christ as well. They're going to become the righteousness of God. Pastor Drando, read Ephesians uh, chapter 5. I think it's chapter uh, 6, excuse me. So you, be very that's... careful how you live, not being like those with no understanding, but live honorably with true wisdom for we are living in evil times. Take full advantage of every day as you spend your life for his purposes and don't live foolishly for you then will have discernment to fully understand God's will. Don't get drunk with wine, which is rebellion. Instead, be filled with the fullness of the Holy Spirit and your hearts will overflow with a joyful song to the Lord. Keep speaking to each other with words of scripture, singing the Psalms and praises and spontaneous songs given by the Spirit. Always give thanks to Father God for every person he brings into your life in the name of the Lord. And out of your reverence for Christ, be supportive of each other in love. I've saved these most important truths for last. Be supernaturally infused with strength through your life union with the Lord Jesus. Stand victorious with the force of his explosive power flowing in and through you. Put on God's complete set of armor provided for yeah. us so that you will be protected as you fight against the evil strategies of the accuser. Your hand-to-hand -hand combat is not with human beings, but with the highest principalities and authorities operating in rebellion under the heavenly realms. For they are a class of demon gods and evil spirits that hold this dark world in bondage. Because of this, you must wear all the armor that God provides so you're protected as you confront the slanderer. For you are destined for all things and will rise victorious. Yes. Put on truth as a belt to strengthen you to stand in triumph. Put on holiness as the protective armor that covers your heart. Stand on your feet alert then you'll always be ready to share the blessings of peace. In every battle, take faith as your wraparound shield, for it is able to extinguish the blazing arrows coming at you from the evil one. Embrace the power of salvation's full deliverance like a helmet to protect your thoughts from lies and take the mighty razor-sharp sword of the spoken word of God. Pray passionately in the Spirit as you constantly intercede with every form of prayer at all times. Pray the blessings of God upon all his believers. Amen. We yes. are to pray for one, each, one another. We are to put on the full armor of God so that the enemy cannot take advantage of us as we are walking out this battle. And by encouraging each other and locking arms, we can charge the city in righteousness. Yeah. We can charge the city in love and we can charge the city in unity as the body of Christ. No divisions, but strength in unity. Amen? That's what Pastor the blessing Drenda, is. Interesting scripture. Uh, Paul used the illustration of a Roman soldier when he talked about our armor. The first thing mentioned was the belt of what? Truth. Now, the belt of truth was what everything was based on. His plate of righteousness was set on that belt. The belt of truth held that up. So knowing the truth about your righteousness, the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God, hung on that belt of what? Truth. The shield of faith, faith is based on truth, right? And then the helmet of salvation is the thoughts thinking truth. 
See, what you think and know, my friend, is your salvation. It's also the enemy's plot. It's that he wants to take truth. He wants you to believe the lies so he has legal access to change your thinking and to let you move into his jurisdiction outside of God's dominion. And this is what we want you to understand. Now, there, Pastor, there are multiple, hundreds, thousands, millions of people that are in pain today. Destruction, families falling apart, poverty, hunger, you name it. Confusion on every front, depression, uh, antidepressant. I mean, the, the culture, they're looking for something. But when you discover who you are in Christ and that what Jesus has paid for, friend, there's freedom. Hi, I'm Gary Cassie, and you will never fulfill your destiny until you fix your money thing. Visit GaryCassie.com and don't forget to hit the subscribe button below for more amazing weekly videos on fixing your money thing. And thanks for watching.